Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are so excited to have our next guest joining us here, Bobby Warren, joining us, the owner of the Foot Ladies and Regional Director for the International Institution of Reflexology. Welcome to the show. How are you today? Thank you, Jill. Thank you very much. I'm doing terrifically. Thank you. Well, excited to have you here. And you're hailing from, is it La Mesa, California? Yes, right outside of San Diego. Beautiful. Pleasure to have you here and excited to get to know you and to talk a little bit about your company. First and foremost, give us a little overview to start. About what? My, how I got into this? Oh, about Foot Ladies, what it is exactly. Yeah. And then we're going to dive into your past. <laughs> okay. Well, the Foot Ladies was the name that uh, my mom and I were both reflexologists, and that's what we decided to call it. We were the Foot Ladies. Oh, my so goodness. So that's way, that's how it, just simple as that. And we you specialize just, in so much, though, right? Uh, tell me just a little bit about the services you, you provide. Well, mainly the reflexology, foot reflexology. Uh, I also do the ion cleanse, which is detoxification. I also have a beamer mat that people can lie on. So it, the full session is is quite great. But oh. my, main, my main focus is the trainings that I have been doing for over 40 years and teaching oh. people how to do this. Wow. Okay. We got to back up here. This is exciting work. My aunt um, does reflexology in New Jersey. So I happen to know a little bit about it. Uh, blessed Great. to have someone in the family. And we're going to teach you all out there who are watching, listening, uh, what it's all about. And she's going to learn how to help you heal that planet step by step, as you say, right? One foot at a time. So go to thefootladies.com. That's thefootladies.com. And uh, in the meantime, let's get to know our guest here and to find out a little bit of your background. Tell Tell me about growing up and how you got into this. <laughs> well, growing up, um, I can go back to my mom. My mom was a uh, Hatha yoga teacher when I was in high school. She taught transcendental meditation. And my dad, maybe being a, he was a businessman, but he also studied astrology. So it's um, I come from a long line of people interested in different things. Well, at one point, my mom had heard, learned about reflexology back in the 60s. And she wanted to learn how to do it. And so in the 70s, she asked me, at one point, she finally said, Bobby, would you like to go with me? I'd like to take this class and I'll pay for it if you go. And I went, okay, sure, why not? Not ever suspecting that um, three or four yeah. years later, I'd be working for the Institute. Oh, which my is what I've goodness. Been doing. Congratulations. Since became certified in 1983. I started working for the Institute in 1985. And it has taken me, I worked with another gentleman out of Ohio, and we traveled and did classes in every state in the United States and all provinces in Canada. So we may have trained um, your is it sister that or your mom. My, my aunt, yeah. Your aunt, yeah, because we taught classes in New York City and people from New Jersey would come over and do the classes with us in Manhattan. So, yeah, more, more than likely, she was taught by one of us. Well, I'm going to talk to her. Well, she was Renee Buckles at the time, then became Renee Healed, and she's back to Renee Buckles. So I'm not sure what her, um, you know, her maiden was named back, back then, but I'm going to talk to her. This is exciting. And yeah. uh, wow. Okay, so hold on. There's so much to you and the work that you're doing. And for someone out there, let's just break it down quick. What is reflexology? Some people might not even know the basics of what it is and how it can help you. Would you mind sharing? No, don't mind at all. No, reflexology, and Chris, this is the definition that we teach all of our students how to say. It's our little elevator speech of reflexology as a science, which deals yeah. with the principle that there are reflexes in the hands and the feet. Excuse me. Wow. They correspond to the entire body. I have behind me up here is a chart, and it shows all the reflexes that as they relate to the body. Interesting. So, and we stimulating these reflexes, excuse me. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Stimulating the reflexes. We're actually going to cause a relaxation effect in the body. That's what it does. It just totally, you can sit there and talk and yak it up during a session. It still will relax everything in the body so that the body can start to heal itself. That's just a natural healing modality that is a great adjunct to whatever other therapies people are getting. Beautiful. Yeah. And we're going to dive more into the work you're doing. But first, I want to know about some obstacles that you've overcome in your career that may inspire some other men and women out there listening today. You know, that was an interesting question because there really weren't any. Now, I grew up in a time when women weren't as, as free as they are today, and we fought hard for our women's rights and all of that. But 
I had no problems. Only one time in Wisconsin did somebody question who I was and why I was there. And they only would talk to my male partner. <laughs> and I was kind of shocked by, by that because I come from California where we've never had a problem with that. So no, I, I was full forward, had a great time. I had no, no restrictions. Amazing. And, you know, did you have a mentor growing up uh, or are you currently mentoring anyone as well? Oh, I am mentoring a lot, all my students. I, I, I don't just leave them. Okay, let's put it this way. Back in the day, we used to teach classes and they were huge, absolutely huge. We'd have something like three or 400 people in the ballroom in Manhattan, uh, New, uh, what is it? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, like just all the big cities, we would have huge classes. Well, now I'm in San Diego. I, my, my, my mother died six years ago. So it's just me doing the classes here in the West Coast. And so I don't go out and travel anymore. So everybody comes to San Diego, which is a great uh, destination to come to, to take my training classes. And once they've taken the classes, I will do, I do Zoom calls, I work with them. In fact, I have a guy coming this afternoon that's taking his exam and he's going to take the work on his, he's a, a, a missionary. And so he's going to take his work on the road. And I think that's pretty cool. It's going to teach a lot of people yeah. down in South America how to do this. And I, I love that idea. Wow. So, yeah, this is I'm impressive. Good. And oh my goodness. So you, your mom, I know, was a big inspiration to you and mentor, I would assume, right? You, you yes, mentioned a absolutely. lot about her. Do you want to share some more information about her? Wow. Well, my mom was very different. Five foot one, powerhouse little lady, wow. strong, strong mm -hmm. hands. She was amazing. And like I said, I was exposed to some very different things. My grandmother was an astrologist. And so my father found it interesting and he started learning it. But my mom, she was always interested into alternative things, different things. And though uh, from the outside, my mom looked like a regular housewife uh -huh. a job. And behind the scenes, here she is teaching yoga <laughs> during the day, meditating twice a day, and um, going on trips with my brother to uh, where where did they go? They went to Italy. Wow! To study with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, and that was back in the '60s. So it's you know we've been doing stuff, different things all these years, and yeah, my mom just kind of dragged my brother and I along with her, and we oh. just participated in all that. Wow. Wow. Well, this is fascinating work you're doing. And we are so excited to have you to talk more about, um, you know, all of the aspects of reflexology, your training program, and uh, let's get started. So for those out there who are just tuning in, just a gentle reminder to go to your website, which is what? The Foot Ladies, that's L-A-D-I-E-S dot com, the Foot Ladies dot com. Yeah. And also, if you are uh, looking to reach out now, let me ask, you've expanded. I mean, I can only imagine how many people you've taught your whole life. How many years did you say you were doing this for? 40 plus. Unbelievable. Well, great to have you here. There's reflexology, there's foot reading, there's a lot that we're going to talk about today. But let's get started with, um, you know, just a little bit about the foot chart that you use and how it can help you with so much, right? Even relationships. So let's share. I, where did you want to begin as far as the benefits of reflexology? Oh my gosh. Uh, I can tell you a couple of stories uh, because sure. it's very, very subtle work and it's cumulative. So the more you get it done, the more the body will be able to relax and more it will be able to heal itself. But there has also been some amazing, amazing results that, um, is absolutely amazing. So I tell people, if you only learn this one technique in the training, it's worth everything you pay. And it's a technique that actually is in the big toe and it create it relates to the brain. And my I got a call from my father one day and he said, your mom's not looking so good. Can you come on over? So uh, I lived about two miles from him and I drove over there. Uh, my mom was sitting there. Her face was all droopy on one side. And she said, my head is killing me. I've had this awful pain. So I sat down and started working with her very quickly. And it's the pain started easing. I could see her face changing as I was working on her feet. I found the area, um, which area on the toes, the toes relate to the head. I found the area that, that was really, really, really really sore because that's what we look for the sore spots that tells me there's a corresponding congestion in that area so I worked on her toes got her to the hospital found out she was having a mini stroke she was having a TIA and um I stopped it it's I stopped it right in the middle of it we wow. got her to the hospital I'm still working on her toes the doctor's like what are you doing I told him what I was doing they said fine just keep going because it's keeping it's her working 
<laughs> it was working. Well, four days later, they let her out of the hospital and we went to get lunch and she got sick. We got in the parking lot. She's like, oh, my head's starting to pound again. We've got to go. So we went back to the hospital, rushed in. Her doctor was and neurologist was standing right there. I said, OK. Oh, and also I was on the way down to the hospital. She lost her eyesight. Her eyesight started to dim and she said she like she could looking through the pinpricks. Yeah. And so I, that scared the daylights out of me. So I get her down there. I asked the doctor, I said, I can't think. Where is it? It's the cranial nerves. So it's at the top of the cranial nerves that relate to the eyes. So he showed me on a little picture and I immediately went to my mom's big toe and right under the thumb and the big toe right here relates to the cervicals. Okay, wow. so on the foot, that also is the, on the side of the big toe. So I'm searching for a sore spot. I went to the front of it. I went to the back. And as I went to the front of the big toe, I pressed in and it was like a Rice Krispie. I went crunch and her eyesight popped back. Mm. Just that quick. Powerful. Absolutely, yes, it is a very, very powerful technique. That one technique can also bring a person out of an epileptic seizure, can also break a fever. There are things that are just amazing with reflexology and knowing it can't hurt anybody. You cannot hurt anybody unless you have really strong hands and you bruise people's feet. That's it. You can work on any condition. There are no contraindications other than a broken foot or a foot in a cast, something like that. But otherwise, you know, it's the, most, it's the safest therapy I can possibly do for people. Beautiful. And what is the method that you use and teach? We teach the Inga method. The Ingham method was developed by Eunice D. Ingham, who was my boss's aunt. So I'm like one generation away from the woman who invented reflexology. It doesn't come from Egypt. It doesn't come from China. It was actually developed in upper state New York with a, by Eunice Ingham, who was a physiotherapist. And she was working with chiropractors. And not only did she do physiotherapy, but she was also learning to be a chiropractor. And the, the guys that she was working with started working with this guy who had um, brought this theory over and it was the zone theory that there are reflexes all over the foot, but there are zones. And if you stimulate one part of a zone, it's going wow. to affect the entire zone. And so that's, and then they gave it to Eunice and she ran with it. And she actually was the one that mapped the, the um, reflexes on the feet. She mapped the entire body onto the foot. And it's just, it's very simple. The most complicated thing to learn are the techniques and your internal body parts. Most people don't know where their stomach is or their spleen or their kidneys. And I teach a lot of anatomy in the classes, but I do it on such a level that people can understand. It's not complicated like college level classes. So it's, it's fun. We have a lot of fun in our classes. Clearly. This is fascinating. Wow. And how long are the classes, by the way? And what's the degree that the certification you get when you're done? Well, each class, there are two days. Each class is two days. And because of the fact that the Institute was a traveling school, mm -hmm. the Eunice used to travel by car cross country from, and she'd give lectures at health food stores. That's how it all got started. She wrote a book called Stories the Feet Can Tell by, by Eunice D. Ingham. And that was in 1938. In 1952, she wrote her second book, which was Stories the Feet Can mm -hmm. or Have Told. And so those two books, she would do book reports all over the country. Okay. And she would send out little postcards and she would travel the northern states over to California and then down and across the southern states to Florida, which is where they would winter. They wintered in Florida, like most people from New York. And that's how she got, how the Institute got started. So they would travel from city to city to city, all of the United States. And so our classes are two day and you have to have four of them. Okay. And there's advanced level classes is, is level three. Level four is where they take their exam at one of the classes, but they have to also have to do documented sessions. They have to have a, a hundred document. They have to work on a lot of people. Mm -hmm. in order to learn the techniques and learn how to work with people sure. and we work marketing and we work with all of that with our students and then uh, they can take as little as three months to do it they can take as long as a year so most people it takes them about six months because I do classes every other month and so they can choose whether they want to come in February or they want to come in um, say April June August and October and November so I do them every other every other month Wow. All right. Well, let's remind everyone all the ways we can reach out to you. I know the website, thefootladies.com. How else can we contact you? 
I just, you can also email me at bobby at the footladies.com. Perfect. Yes. And, and I always answer my emails. So, oh my goodness. Yeah. And are you on any social media pages as well that we need to be aware of? Uh, yes, the Foot Ladies is on Facebook. Hey. Yep, and, uh, and Instagram. So, yeah, we're on both. Wonderful. And I'm just going to throw that into our chat here for our editor later to put that in. What else, Bobby Warren, do you want our listeners to know about the work you're doing and, you know, nationwide? Right. It is. It is nationwide. And well, internationally, we do have instructors. And on my website, you can look up reflexology instructors and see the different names of different countries where we teach. And um, yeah, it's just uh, pretty much me now here in the States. I think there's Bertha as another lady that does some stuff and uh, in the East Coast. Uh, but I just kind of handle all the West Coast and the classes are small and they're intimate. And uh, I really like that because I can work with people one-on-one, -on -one, which I didn't used to be able to do that back in the day when we had hundreds of students. Mm -hmm. uh, not to say that they're not out there. Again, I just you know, I only choose to work with eight at a time, six Perfect. to eight at a time. And yeah. now the cost of the workshop, is there you know, different rates for first, people that sign up? It's about altogether about $1,500. I mean, it's okay. really, really inexpensive. About $400 for the first class. Okay. And then $275 for the second. Um, I think it's $275 for the third. Oh, I don't know. But go on my website and look it up. <laughs> there it is. It's under reflexology training. It has all the lists of the dates. It has the prices, the requirements. Everything is on that page. Got it. Well, you know, the work you're doing, clearly you're so passionate about it and you want more people to get involved. And let me ask though, yes, what happened yes. during the pandemic? What happened for you and everyone in your field? Well, we didn't work for a while. Well, yeah. we, um, and actually I loved having the time off to tell you the truth. It was great. I was on the computer all the time. But about June of that year, and there were a couple of clients that I still worked with. I had no fear of COVID. I had no fear of it at all. So people would come in and I'd have everything covered with sheets and I'd have the antiseptic and, and I'd wear the mask and let them wear the mask. And it was fine. So I about, about June of that year, I, I 2020, I, I went back to work. And I think I still have my classes at the end of the year. I said, those of you who are not scared of the COVID, come on over, we'll do the classes. And so we did. Yeah. Beautiful. But we had to make sure that everybody was... You know, it's sanitary and the masks and we did the protection for people if that's what they wanted to do. Yeah. Well, besides reflexology training, you also offer other courses too, right? Mm hmm Yes. I have the foot reading class, which is with my, oops, I'm losing my blue foot. That's okay. Which is this Cute. right there. Yeah. I wrote this in 2006 and because I started noticing that there oh. was a comp was comparable when people, people sit about their feet there was a personality comparison like this one guy had really stiff ankles I mean really stiff and the neck that relates to the neck so when you have a really stiff ankle it's uh, probably a lot of tight and tension in the neck but it also can mean that the person is very narrow-minded they only look at their own viewpoint they don't look Whoa. in other directions and it's very interesting. Yeah. Feet that are very swollen. <laughs> like my dad had edema. My dad had edema very badly. Unshed tears. And okay. it wasn't until he was much older that we realized what he had grown up with and the feelings of abandonment when his father left the family at age six. And, yeah. you know, all those things will show up. How you react to life shows up in the feet. And it is absolutely amazing. So I do have classes in that. I even have that on my on my website. I have an online course in foot reading, and it's a do it yourself. You sign up, you and you just click on and watch the each segment and learn about how to um, read the the feet. It's the art of reading, uh, foot reading to better understand yourself and others. And so I, the last I just did, gave a talk the other day so to some seniors, and the name of the title was Meet and Greet Through the Feet. Oh, oh, I, also I did love that, that. Yeah, we had a lot of fun reading all the uh, seniors' feet, and it was it was great. Yeah. And so, what uh, about I, body massage too? I was reading you do that as well. No, I do. Um, I have a class in plantar fasciitis and reflexology. 
So I train our therapists how to work with plantar fasciitis. It's can can you tell me what plantar fasciitis is? Because my son's father sure. complains all the time about what we went pumpkin picking yesterday. I have a seven and nine year old and his feet are killing him. It's my plantar fasciitis. I said, I've been hearing that term for three years. What are you doing about it? Oh, I got to go to the doctor. <laughs> Okay, I don't know what it is. What I got to go to the doctor. I don't even think he knows what it is. Can you give me yeah. some insight to this? Maybe some benefits I could, I'm going to see him later, actually. I'm going to tell mm -hmm. him you gave me some tips. What should he be doing? What can he do? Plantar fasciitis, the bottom of the foot, the sole of the foot mm -hmm. um, is the plantar, okay? And the fascia, fascia is the sheath or the, the what surrounds your muscles. And it's kind of a misnomer because it really isn't. There's no inflammation of the fascia. It's just the muscles have become very tight and very, the circulation's not really good. And it can cause a lot of pain. Comes from the lower back, comes from the legs. So it doesn't matter what you do with the feet. You also have to address the lower back tightness or the uh, muscle tightness in the legs. And what I do with people is I also tape their, tape their feet, um, make sure that they're wearing good arch supports. Okay. If that's what they need. Um, he can soak his feet in Epsom salts to help with any inflammation. Um, and if he can find something kind of spiky, uh, like um, I wish I had one sitting here, but there are like little okay. brown balls that have little spikes on them. And he could roll wow. his feet on that. And that's all down around the heel and the arch of the foot where they have the pain. But it's um, it's a process getting rid of that. But the first thing you should do is look at his shoes, make sure he's not walking with flip-flops or shoes like that do a lot of stretching he's got to do a lot of stretching because the legs are the are the culprit the leg muscles are the culprit yeah so, so those are some of the things you can do make sure he wears wide enough shoes shoes with an arch support and doing stretching of the legs and the back will it ever go away yes it can it can now what the doctor will do is is he would give the um a shot of a of a cortisone in the foot now that is a Band-Aid. It doesn't fix the underlying cause, which is what we do. I go for the underlying cause and not just putting a Band-Aid on it, which they could just, you know, it's, and that sometimes works and many times it doesn't. So that's what the doctor will do. So he said, go to the doctor, that's all they can do. But if you can find a reflexologist, um, see, I've, ugh, one of the things I've specialized in that. And I specialize in working with people with neuromas, bone spurs, plantar fasciitis, and that's not reflexology, but it's feet and everything feet is something I wanted to know. So that's, I teach all about that and how, what the, each muscle is and what muscles relate to what on the feet. And um, so that's what the students learn how to, how to deal with that. Amazing. Thank you so much. We still have five more minutes left in your show. What else do you want to make sure we cover for today? This is exciting. How so much healing could happen. Who knew how connected we are? I've always seen that foot chart. <laughs> it is. It's absolutely. Well, you stop and think about the fact that we have um, the iridologists, those okay. that read the iris of the eye. Okay. The yep. body is presented yeah. on the iris of the eye. Same with the ears with auricular therapy, which is acupuncture and acupressure. Okay. So they have a, a human body. It's like an embryo situation there. So in my mind, this is my theory that they're, Every cell of your body has the DNA blueprint for your body. So that's how they're able to clone the sheep. Remember Dolly, when they, they cloned her yeah. decades ago? Well, your DNA, your, your blueprint has to be in those cells. So that makes sense that there's a blueprint in your eye. There's a blueprint in your ears. People who do colonics, there's a blueprint in the colon that, if, that affects every different part of your body. And so it makes sense that the feet and the hands would also. Now that's that's my theory that that's what we're doing and it's an app we just recently had a research project done um people also can look kevin Kuntz, he and his wife they did a research project where they worked on someone in an mri functional mri machine this in minnesota yeah and he was working while he was working on people they were testing with an mri to see what was happening in the brain it was a proof of concept research project and it was amazing to see how the brain lights up when we touch the feet and it goes to the areas that relate to the body parts, which is amazing. And people have to be careful what charts they look at too, because there are many, 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 many copies of our charts, but these are the original and it's set up like this. The toes relate to the head, the mm -hmm. ball of the foot, the ball, the hand here relates to your chest area. 
The arch of the foot relates to the abdominal area and your central portion of your body. Okay. And the heel relates to the part you sit on. You go in the, the arch of the foot right along this, the arch, and that relates to the spine. And the arms and legs are on the outside of the foot. So it's just head, chest, midriff, belly, butt. That's it. And what happens, though, with many charts is because of our copyright laws that Eunice copyrighted the charts yeah. way back in the day. And, and so did the home office. Okay. So that, um, they can't really use them without our permission. Oh. So that's they will change the location of the reflexes. They'll put them in some place because in order to not infringe on a copyright law, you have to change things. And so we get all these weird looking charts out there. So be a bit where I'll show you right here. If you can see. Yeah. Up there. Oh, yeah, I see it right there. Yeah, right there. Fascinating. That's the one I'm familiar with. I remember my aunt always using that. I, I can't wait to talk to my aunt to see if she knows who you are, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the thing is, I don't even remember the names of my of teachers. Of course not. Of course not. But I'm curious. I'm sure she would remember you for sure. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've been doing this three quarters of my life. This has wow. been my passion for my entire life. And I, I love it because what it can do for people and what it doesn't do, it doesn't hurt you. That's the neat thing about it. How did you want to leave off for today? We still have just two and a half minutes left. So I want to make sure you're getting your full time today and, uh, you know, the benefits about working with you and coming on board. Well, I just um, I, I just talked to a student this morning that is she's in Placerville, California, and she is doing so well. She opened up her, her own little office and she had a grand opening and she sent me pictures. I love that. I absolutely love that. I love talking to the students. I love following up with them and, and making sure that things are right. Zoom was the best invention on the planet because then I can work with people. If they forget how to do something or they have an answer to a question, that's there. So people can, can email me, ask me questions. They can go to my website and I have tons of information on there. Is you, you obviously went and looked at it. Um, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Exciting to have you here and looking forward to the next time we get to connect. I would love to hear some more, you know, of your customer uh, client testimonials about the benefits of this. And uh, maybe if we're on again to talk to even some of your your clients or some of the people you've trained, it, it's great. The, the, the potential is limitless uh, with the people you're helping. And just again, when is the next seminar if someone's listening today? Oh, the Training next course. seminar is coming up in two weeks in November. It's a, a Saturday, Sunday, November, the first weekend in November. The next ones are at the very last day of January and February 1st. January and, and, and if they register 1st. 30 days early, they get a little bit of an early bird uh, discount, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. They get, a, I think, a $50 discount. Awesome. Thank you so much. Pleasure having you here again. Go to the website, well, thefootladies.com. And a pleasure getting to know you today. And hopefully we'll connect again soon. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Jill, so much for be having me here. Uh, now I'm thinking it. about my feet. I'm taking off my shoe and I'm like, I could use some of this. All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk again them. soon. Thank okay. you. No Bye. virtual foot sessions. Now it doesn't work no, that way. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go see my aunt. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, okay. Bobby. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes. 
and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.